Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. There's a theory going around that comic book heroes are the great modern myths, in the same way that Hercules or Perseus were the great Greek myths. Well, if that's true, then Captain America must be douchicus because he sure doesn't hold up. Now, I'm not talking about the comic books themselves. I never really read those. I'm solely going by the low-budget action film that actually came out in 1990 under the same name, Captain America. Never heard of it? There's a reason. Ridiculously stupid and embarrassingly over the top, Captain America was among one of the cheesiest comic book movies ever made. And knowing how cheesy comic books already are, that's pretty bad. So strap on your devil horned eagle wings and let's take a look at Captain America! So the credits roll as we start off this classic American story about a classic American superhero in the classic American heartland of Italy. Unusual start. Mario Puzo write this? Come on, where's the action? Oh, here we go. So a young child prodigy is taken away from his family and used as a guinea pig in an evil experiment. What does the experiment do? Auf eine Art und Weise verändert durch eine Erfindung. Wie Sie sehen, werden es zwei Mal. We call it the Harryhausen effect. The scientist running the experiment doesn't want to harm a child, and thus she escapes this evil, heavily armed military base by... just jumping out the window. Well, that was unrealistically simple. We then cut to seven years later. Yeah, thanks, we can do the math. We see an injured soldier named Steve Rogers, who's leaving his home to partake in a similar experiment that could heal his leg and make him even stronger. Everyone comes to say goodbye, except for his girlfriend, Bernie. What is it? I'm sorry, it's just... It's just that I love you. That's why I didn't come to send you off. I can't imagine not knowing what you're doing or where you're going. So it appears that theirs is a romance that will always last. About 20 seconds. I'm serious, they share the screen for just 20 seconds before he leaves. I grow more attached to my toothbrush in that amount of time! So anyway, they take him to a secret base located just under an everyday restaurant. How's the pot roast today, Roz? Oh, about as good as it was yesterday. Mm. Eh, looks like the usual service at Denny's. So they go downstairs to the secret laboratory where they're trying to create the perfect American superhero and ultimate Grand Slam breakfast. He may not be Superman, but he'll be a living symbol of what this country stands for. Well, I agree with the first part. <laughs> that was just to see if it was on. Here's the real deal. The camera wasn't recording. Let's try it again! <laughs> I hate humanity. So the experiment works. Steve's leg is cured and he seems more powerful than ever before. The onlookers wish to congratulate the scientists. A remarkable work, Dr. Nacelli. Congratulations. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> wow, that was... The most over-the-top way to kill somebody. I give you props, guy. That, that was mighty silly. I mean, it's just so sporadic. You could call it the psych Hitler. You go in to shake someone's hand, it's like, psych, hi, Hitler. Do you think he does that everywhere? Like at weddings? A toast to the bride and groom. On this, the happiest day of their high Hitler! Or how about bar mitzvahs? You think he does it there? Jimmy. Now that you're officially a man, let us celebrate with this most sacred of Jewish traditions. <laughs> or good God, what if he was a kindergarten teacher? The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain. To <laughs> so the scientist is killed as Steve is shot and put in the hospital. Colonel, that young man is lucky to have survived the surgery. I'm on a level with you, doctor. I am Matt Dillon's brother. What's at stake here is the lives of thousands of innocent people. 
is. But it turns out all his wounds are healed as he's ready to leap into action and get revenge. Wait, no, 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 no. You can't do that, movie. You can't just toss him into that outfit. I mean, have you seen it? There's car wash clowns that look more dignified than that. If you don't give some build-up or explanation, nobody's gonna take it seriously. Colonel Lewis, sir, there's something nobody's talked about. When do I get some fresh troops in my battalion? Dr. Vaselli had all the details to the process in her head. Besides, you got that crazy fireproof uniform Dr. Vaselli made up for you. She didn't know much about camouflage, but she sure did love the red, white, and blue. She thought dressing you up like a human bullseye would do much better at throwing the enemy off. So after that extremely weak explanation about the costume, they toss him out of the plane to go hunt some Nazis. I hope I look silly enough. What, they invade F Troop? So after he defeats the Nazis with his flying saucer sled, he makes it to their main headquarters, where he finds the child that was experimented on at the beginning of the film, who is now transformed into... Freddy Krueger's wax sculpture. Bastards! Actually, he's known as Red Skull, who is sadly much more powerful than the Mighty Captain. <laughs> Wow, um, Captain America kinda sucks. Pity him, he is like a child! So after getting his blue nads kicked, they strap him to a missile and plan to launch him towards the White House. Where is the big bomb going? White House. A present for President Roosevelt. How will Captain America get out of this one? Will he turn the White House into rubble, or will he escape to get his American ass beaten once more? Tune in next time, which is... right now? You can travel cheaply as one, you sick bastard! Ah! Rolling hard! The mighty! No. Ah! I'd give my right hand to get my right hand back! Yeah, thanks, movie. I never would figure that out. What are you doing up? So in that place that's apparently hard to identify, a young boy named Tom Kimball dreams about the possibilities of Washington. How do you expect me to sleep, Mom? We're in Washington, D.C. When I grew up, I'm the president. I want to invade countries that will get a BJ in the Oval Office and not be able to pass a questionable health care bill. President! So because the kid is just so gosh darn excited, he sneaks out in the middle of the night to take pictures of the White House. Wow, what a dork. Just silly. So Captain America actually kicks the rocket over the White House, just missing it. When did this turn into a Daffy Duck cartoon? So the rocket somehow lands in Alaska without exploding and leaves Captain America in the snow. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen, our hero. And just when you're hoping he'll disappear from the movie altogether, he sort of does. Literally decades go by without any mention of the guy. I guess the movie just decided to give up on him. So we get all the way to the 90s where that Tom Kimmel boy grows up and actually does become President of the United States. A white guy is President? <laughs> I can't believe that this day and age. We don't take he meets up with a guy named General Fleming, played oddly enough yes, by the father from A Christmas Story. You just simply can't expect us to cut back on our solid waste 90% in six months. We have to be as fragile as possible. We then cut to the League of Extraordinary Accents, where all sorts of evildoers plan evil things. And it turns out the General is among them as well. You're gonna see everything that you worked for and planned for for the last 30 years go right down the crapper. Assassination, he's the word of trouble. Well, now, who's this guy? Is this a new villain or something? Wait a minute. That's Red Skull? Well, what happened to him? Did he just magically grow his skin back? There's plastic surgery and then there's fucking miracles, guys. I mean, isn't the whole reason they called him Red Skull because, oh, I don't know, he had a friggin' Red Skull? Okay, whatever. After Red Skull becomes Numb Skull, they discuss their diabolical plans to kidnap the president and brainwash him to do their evil deeds. I am one of humble businessmen. 
doubles in science. Before you make your decision... Say, wasn't there a Captain America in this movie? Yeah, I know, because it changed so much over the decades. Will you lay off the descriptions? So they find Captain America years later, literally frozen in a block of ice as they just thaw him out in their tents and he just walks off like nothing happened. That's pretty weak! No way did that just happen. I can't believe we just thawed out a basketball mascot! So the president hears about this, and rather than, oh, I don't know, call the Secret Service or something, he calls his childhood friend played by Ned Beatty like he's eight years old again. Were well, you sure it's not some kind of crazy hoax? Can you spare me the conspiracy theory just this once? Enough of your childish ravings! I'm talking about a superhero that was strapped to a missile and frozen in ice! But Red Skull this guy- Oh, fuck you, movie! Do you really think we can't figure out where this is? I mean, seriously, why don't you just have a subtitle under everything? And background on everyone on his security staff. Consider it done, Mr. Sensors. So as I was saying, Red Skull discovers about Captain America 2, and thus sends his finest hot chicks to track him down. But thankfully, the president is quick to act, as he sends... one pudgy middle-aged journalist to handle the situation. Am I in the circus? So, Captain America escapes the evil supermodels on dirt bikes because he heroically cowers into a pickup truck being driven by Ned Beatty. I honestly could not make this up if I tried. This Red Skull guy was closely involved in the murders of Robert Kennedy, John Kennedy, Martin Luther King. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. You're seriously gonna bring up the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in a movie that has this thing in it? Why do I get the feeling that's not gonna mesh? Would you pull the car over, please? I think I'm gonna be sick. So Captain America pretends to be car sick and, I'm not kidding here, steals the car away. This guy's an asshole. When he's not getting his useless butt kicked, he's either hiding under something or running away. Talk about Captain Douchebag. So he goes back to his old home only to find his girlfriend of two sentences is married and has an identical twin daughter. And yes, yeah, she's played by the same actress. Everyone kept saying that missing in action was just another way of saying blown to smithereens. But I never believed them. Not for one second. That's why I got married? I feel so old and ugly and, and, and look at you. You? Ugly. Not a chance. I don't care if you look like a female John Voight, it just turns me on more. But Red Skull sends out more fashion models to hunt him down and kill him. Look at this, it looks like the cover of Vogue. So they break into the house, shoot Chris Christopherson, and kill dear old Bernie. Where's my mother? We also find out that while this was going on, the president was in fact kidnapped. The president of the United States was abducted from his hotel in Rome. Boy, our armed forces really kind of suck, don't they? They create a neon action hero who can't fight and let the ruler of the free nation get abducted without a cutscene. These guys couldn't defeat Cobra! Cobra! So through a series of driving, snooping, and yes, more heroic hiding, Teeth and the daughter find the need to travel to Rome in order to find the evil Red Skull. Could you pull over for a minute? I think I'm gonna be sick. Are you okay? Oh god, not again, you dickweed! What are you doing? I can't take you into danger, Sheriff. Captain America, bravely abandoning the people who help him in his time of need. So we see Steve try to talk to some of the local people, but doesn't manage to get far. Cosa volete? Uh, speak English? I, I was wondering. <laughs> I like that. Do you speak English? No? Well, then I'll just keep speaking. Buongiorno! The daughter somehow manages to follow his car on foot and proceeds to help him out with her Italian. Which makes the previous scene entirely pointless. So they find an old tape recorder that has the recording of Red Skull's kidnapping as a child. <laughs> 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 
but they're then approached by Red Skull's hot chicks who try to kill him again. Pretty slow on those guns, ladies. I mean, you're not moving like you're doing a yoga move. Just whip it out! So we partake in a pretty standard chase scene with no real surprises. Uh, hi! A giant car is about to run you over? I mean, what are you kids? Blind, deaf, and just all around stupid? I love this. He pushes the daughter out of the way of the bike so he can get hit with the bike. Uh, oh yeah, for some reason I thought it was a superhero or something. So he grabs a bike of his own, speeds off into the sunset, and then falls off the cliff. I mean, really? Are you even surprised? God, I suck! Well, gee, it's not like we can just keep looking for 10 more seconds. Let's go, ladies. So they finally find the location of the president as they sneak into their hideout to save him. This looks like a job for flamboyance. So the president escapes, but is cornered by the bad guys. His brilliant way out? Killing himself. Hey, after being in this movie, I don't blame you. But luckily, Captain America just happened to be climbing up the wall at the time. Wait on the North Shore. There's some caves there at the base of the cliff where you can hide. I'll come and get you when we get out. Are you kidding? I'm not bailing out on Captain America. Good! You can probably kick more ass than he can! So he confronts Red Skull as we get some flips, kicks, punches, the president tosses him his multicolored pizza pan as he escapes to the roof. Mr. President! Thanks. Mentos, the fresh maker. So Red Skull goes to arm another bomb, which is in a piano. Yeah, whatever. As Captain America does what he's best at. Hiding like a pussy. But the daughter plays the recording of his kidnapping to distract him as Captain America gets out his Wonder Frisbee and knocks him off the cliff. It's up. I just decapitated a hot chick. I am the great American hero. So the president calls in his Scottish ninja army men as Captain America hugs his dear daughter and makes one last speech to the audience. In Rome today, 116 nations agreed to an environmental protection treaty. In a brief statement after the signing... Okay, if you start rolling the credits over the dialogue, we kind of figure it's not important. Most important plot points happen before the movie is over. So yeah, just going by this movie alone, it appears that Captain America would be the lamest superhero ever. I mean, just look at the highlights on the back of the box. It's Captain America getting beaten up by Red Skull and being strapped to the bomb. These are the heroic highlights, kids. Oh, I also like this where it says that Captain America is a high-flying adventure for children of all ages as long as you're over the age of 13. This is crap, plain and simple. It's a wimpy superhero, it's a boring story, and the production value looks like it was more out of the 70s than it was the 90s. But to be fair, this is a very tough superhero to pull off. I mean, what guy could honestly look the least bit intimidating in that ridiculous outfit? Chuck Norris! I'm the nostalgia creator, remember it so you don't have to.